Engaging with people, not just um, here in Goa, but also uh, nationwide and even, even internationally. We're in focus. We've got sound. I'm so hot, I'm gonna like just melt. This is Waswell X Waswell, and today I am again coming from Goa. I am at the Sunaparanta Goa Center for the Arts, and I'm sitting with the chief curator, Leandra D'Souza. How are you today, Leandra? Good? Very good, boss. And, and we're in front of a beautiful Rakib Shah, which we chose for the backdrop. So, anyway, um, I just want to say that first of all, like Suna Paranta is like this fabulous space. I've been here many times. It's got a cafe. It's got exhibition spaces. To me, it's like one of the must-see places in Goa if you're into the arts. But I want to ask you today about how it's generally managed. What kind of exhibitions do you have? Maybe you want to talk about the current exhibition. I'll leave it up to you. Well, uh, Waspa, as you know, Sunaparanta um, is a foundation that was started in 2009 by our patrons Dipti Dattaraj and Ishita Salgankar with the vision um, to, to, to harness and showcase um, the, the legacy, uh, the, the cultural legacy and the landscape of Goa and at the same time to bring to Goa um, uh, you know uh, what what was happening in the in 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 both uh, India as well as as well as internationally. I was amazed. I was invited down here a number of years ago by Rajan Fulari, who of course is going, and uh, they were running a printmaking workshop residency, whatever. And I was invited down as a guest curator, and I had the honor of giving a presentation about my print collection in this beautiful amphitheater you have outside. I love the amphitheater here. And uh, it was just wonderful. And as soon as I started giving the presentation, all of these flying ants came and flew down on my laptop because of the light. <laughs> But they, they ran away soon enough. But there was such a turnout of people. I mean, I was amazed how many locals came to that presentation. There's, there's a real energy here that the local people in Goa just love this place. And they, they exactly. come all and the time. The, what is uh, peculiar with, uh, with a place like Goa is that we don't only have uh, a local uh, population that is very culturally inclined and, and interested uh, not just in the visual arts but uh, across the spectrum so you have uh, the performing arts theater dance um, but we also have uh, in Goa a large um, influx of, of tourists um, throughout the year so that allows us the, the, the luxury and the privilege to have this diverse audience really throughout the year and, and a really great eclectic mix of people that are coming to our space. And you have the wonderful cafe here which is very good coffee and pastries and I think that you also serve food yes for yes. lunch and <laughs> soups and things I think. Beautiful courtyard is just such a wonderful space. But tell us about some of the exhibitions that you've held here or events. Maybe you want to talk about this current exhibition? Um, maybe I'll start by telling you what exactly we, we do here. So we, okay. we, we um, have a programming that includes a visual arts exhibitions that we run throughout the year. And in a year, we'll have four to six exhibitions. A lot of the exhibitions combine both what is happening here, like what is the research, what, is the, um, what are the ideas that are being produced out of Goa, and at the same time, complement that with um, what is, um, you know, with, with emerging and, and well-known artists from, 
across the across the country and then also internationally. So we um, uh, institutional um, networks and collaborations is very much part of the work that we do. We collaborate with uh, not just um, artistic institutions, uh, both nationally and internationally, but also cultural bodies that are uh, present uh, represented here in uh, in India. And at the same time, in addition to our visual arts um, exhibitions, we also run um, uh, multidisciplinary uh, and multi-performative events. So we'll have uh, theater uh, events or performing arts events to complement ongoing exhibitions. At the same time, uh, pedagogy is a very important part of what we do. And we run an art and theater program throughout the year um, for uh, uh, children from 5 years to 18 years. We also run um, a skills development uh, uh, programming for young artists emerging out of the university circuit here. Uh, so pedagogy is a very important part of, of, what, we, uh, of what we do. And um, to tell you a little bit about uh, this exhibition, but also uh, how we led up to this exhibition. Well, this exhibition is very interesting, and I was surprised because in the next room, there's there's several rooms here, and there's a small gallery called Gallery 3, and I walked in and there were all these names lit up in this band around the room, and surprisingly, my name was there. I was like, why was my name there? But you can explain why my name was yeah. there. All right. So. Um, what I was telling you about the different things that we're doing in the past nine months, as you know, we've all been experiencing this pandemic in very, very different ways. And it has put, I mean, it had put, um, uh, you know, a strain on the, on the cultural community actually worldwide. Um, and just before we went into lockdown, what we uh, did was we announced this open call to artists, inviting them to send us proposals on how do we cope creatively with isolation. And uh, we, we call this, this project Surviving Self-Quarantine. And um, we, we announced it just before literally we went into this Janta curfew. And almost spontaneously, we began this whole range of programming uh, virtually. Um, that uh, began as this, this open call, um, where artists, one of which was Pallavi Paul, I'll tell you a little bit about the work that, that then developed. So through the, the 10 weeks of our lockdown, at least here in Goa, we ran these full-fledged artistic projects on our Instagram platforms, on our Facebook uh, uh, social and, and other social media uh, platforms, um, engaging with people not just um, here in Goa but also uh, nationwide and even, even internationally um, through these different uh, projects and how to remain connected to, uh, to people and how to keep um, speaking to people in a very absurd, um, absurd way. So we began with the Surviving SQ um, series that we ran for 10 weeks and at the same time we also began this uh, online talk show called Listen In. I remember those first two months of the lockdown because I was locked down at Udaipur and it was just horrible. It was. Because I couldn't even see Ganpat at that time. I mean, I was like totally isolated and it got so boring. And at first I thought, well, this is a great time to read books and do everything I wanted to do. But you realize how much you just missed going outside. Exactly. You know? And it was this very ambiguous time because on one hand, you saw a lot of people go, go, you know, go back home, return indoors and sort of reconnect with, with family life, reconnect with the kitchen and doing domestic activities. But then when it started to extend, there were these new anxieties that started to play out. And at the same time, you were getting affected by what was going on around you. And yes. there's just, there was this incredible loss that was happening. So you see this trajectory and we experienced it actually in these very participatory projects that were happening uh, in this virtual space. So we started to use uh, the virtual space as a tool for reflection, discussion, and that's how our Listen In talk show began, where um, we started inviting creative practitioners, but not just creative practitioners, just urbanists, architects, AI designers, 
uh, conservationists to discuss about this contemporary situation. How do we, not just how do we move forward, how do we make sense of this time? And how do we um, use this time to reflect upon more urgent questions of uh, our ecology, our, uh, our, our climate? Sure. And, um, for us, I think, in addition to all these urgent questions uh, related to our environment, I think for us and what we keep doing in all of our shows is really focusing on what it means to be human. Mm. What are the core human values that we need to keep focusing on and we need to, to, to nurture? And I think a lot of the exhibitions that, that I've been involved in and that we, we are currently developing are looking at that. So, so looking at empathy, compassion, kindness and, and what it really... That's one reason I really like what you're doing at Suna Paranta because there is this emphasis on humanism and humanity. You know, and you get a little political sometimes in your shows and things too, but basically there's a thing of, of humanity. How do we hold ourselves together? I love that project you did with the, uh, the audio recordings. Do you want to talk about yeah. that at all? Um, yeah, I'll talk about Pallavi's project and how it, um, how it evolved into this show. Um, so during this, this time of lockdown, I was talking about the surviving self-quarantine projects that, that came about, one of which was Pallavi Paul's Share Your Quiet where she invited people to send in audio clips of um, their quiet. So from their homes, from their gardens, from the spaces that they were confined to. And what started as this um, small little project became this transnational global uh, work where every week the compilations that we would collect were then transformed into these uh, collective symphonies, we called it, and we played um, on Instagram over, for over 10 weeks these, um, these audio symphonies that now um, in this present show called Remembering Sisyphus, uh, Lessons in Uncertainty, we have um, evolved it into its physical form. So this was... I was just remember project. that I listened to the first ones and many of them were of birds in the garden. Exactly. You know, and I went outside of my home in Udaipur. I live in an apartment complex. And I went outside and I just recorded the, the sound of the dogs howling because that's so Rajasthani. You know, the dogs at night, oh, you know, like that. And it, it was great. I enjoyed it. I did I do the, a good dog temple imitation? Sound also. There was I also did the temple sound and the drums from the temple. I think I sent you two audios. Yeah. Yeah. So I think on, on one level, it was not just about how do we uh, stay connected to, to our audiences and not just how do we engage with people, but how can we really um, explore what the function of art can be? Um, can it be a tool for social and cultural critique? And if so, um, through these very absurd requests, like you know, this artist inviting people to share, to send in an audio clip of silence, how does that uh, small act enable you to change your perspective? And when you change your perspective, you start to see things differently. So we're really interested in that shift and what happens with that shift. And I think we explore that with, with the, the works that we have in, in all our exhibitions, the artists that we work with. And, yeah. We're going through a tremendous global shift now, you know, because of the pandemic. And it's, it's made people rethink everything about our societies and how they're structured and how they possibly should be structured differently, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah, and at the same time, also um, learning, and it's, it's been a learning curve for us too, how um, certain tools or certain languages are maybe not so relevant anymore. So how it's not just about adapting to new technologies, but, um, but also how you use that as a, as a challenge and as, as, as a way to look at how you, how you um, conceive of your exhibitions in a new way. How do you look at it afresh and when you look at it afresh something exciting emerges from that. So we're looking at also how to expand the language of our exhibitions where it's not just about the object that you put on a wall anymore but how how that that object invites uh, um, invites us to investigate or look at material and what 
what that relationship with the material can, can enable. And at the same time, um, yes, addressing questions that, that are becoming uh, really important to address as cultural practitioners. Um, and at the same time, as I, as I mentioned before, uh, also this, this human connection, which we're really lacking, uh, especially now that we venture more and more into, you know, this te technologies and we, we keep going into different forms of isolation. So um, now the present show, Remembering Sisyphus, um, was the first show that we opened after being in lockdown for nine months, uh, where we finally opened our spaces to uh, audiences in Goa. And um, the, the show actually um, starts off from the story of Sisyphus, which you know is the Greek character who was condemned to do the same task for life. Basically, he had to um, carry this rock up this hill only to have the rock fall back down. He was down. always pushing this big boulder up exactly, the hill and whenever yeah. he got to the top the boulder fell down again yeah. and then he'd have to do the same thing again. Exactly, yeah. And so the, the, the story of the show emerges from, from Sisyphus's tale and um, later on in fact the existentialist um, writer Albert Camus, he came up with this essay paralleling this story to our lives and he said that we as humans we're constantly looking for order in our lives but all we keep finding is chaos right. and the only thing that is certain is uncertainty so how do we how do we um, uh, overcome this and his um, philosophy was that Sisyphus just looked ahead and he didn't think about it and he just went about with his with his uh, punishment um, and he said that um, this state of absurdity and this absurd life artists and creative individuals know how to live like this and um, so this was how the the, the show really evolved uh, to look at things from a creative perspective and um, we we had, um, in addition to um, Pallavi Paul's work, another um, quite uh, interesting project that uh, started during lockdown and is continuing called the Decameron 19, which is uh, this group of artists that came together. And Decameron 19 actually takes off from um, Giovanni Boccaccio, the, the Renaissance writer, okay. obviously the pre-Renaissance writer, but the Renaissance writer, he came up with a book during the plague about these uh, Florentine, um, these rich Florentine girls that decide to escape the plague and move to the countryside. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. It's just that when they went to the countryside with their friends, they didn't know what to do for the time that they were there. So over a hundred days, they decided to entertain each other through musical compositions and poetry readings. And so this group of artists collect every week, and they're from across the world. They're a group of 12 to 19, and the, the group keeps growing. They meet every week, and they entertain each other literally through random actions, performances, scores, musical compositions. And this project is actually ongoing. And for us, it was, it was really wonderful to show a slice of what was happening and how artists were coming together during, during this time. Well, I've become, you know, number one, when COVID became prevalent and we realized we were having a pandemic and essentially a modern day plague, which affects older people like me. First thing I thought of was this Edgar Allan Poe's old short story, The Mosque of the Red Death, that you know we're all going to like seal ourselves up in our palaces to escape the plague, which of course in Poe's story they don't escape the plague because the plague always finds a way to enter. But also, I mean, what you were just talking about it was Sisyphus and this whole exhibition it reminded me of Jordan Peterson's whole idea that life is basically chaos. It's chaos and that one of our duties or functions as humans to be completely human is to try to order that chaos as best as we possibly can. But we're doomed to fail because no matter how we order it, it will always eventually deteriorate and it wants to revert naturally back to chaos. The, the boulder wants to roll back to the bottom of the hill. But you know, that's the, the dignity of humanity is like you, you shoulder that suffering and you realize you have to keep trying because that's the only way you can survive. So with, with all our, of our exhibitions, um, in fact, uh, talking about the, the story of Sisyphus, it was not 
true that it actually began. It began with our last show, Games of Chance, and one of the works, which was Ravi Agarwal's, was a photograph of, it was a, a, a staged situation with a father and a son and the dog in the PPE suit. It was oh, a black yeah, and yeah, white yeah. image of the three of them by nature. And uh, Ravi Agarwal's um, uh, research has, has you know, been related to this coexistence of viruses and bacteria and how do we thrive or, or survive or, or not amidst that and also um, you know questioning about what is happening when we are shifting our, our position is no longer in the center so what is happening now that we're shifting to this periphery and we're in a, you know we're, we're living in this existence where we're going to have to be sh you know vaccinated every year what, what happens for, in the Anthropocene where basically nature is sort of rejecting us at this point exactly, as yeah. uh, invasive species you know in the larger ecosystem so yeah that's the future we need to contend with but I don't think it's hopeless I don't no, think, I don't it's, think hopeless. it's hopeless we, we actually I'm, I'm hope. a very hopeful person always and um, but taking from that uh, how do we as cultural practitioners um, question that and you know where do we fit in that um, uh, what is going to happen to the work that we're producing you know where is our research going to go now and what are the trajectories it's going to take so those those are the questions that we're very interested to see what is happening uh, with the artistic community and that takes us to the next show which will open in uh, February now, which has um, six artists, all from Goa. Okay. okay. They're not just Goan artists, but artists that have moved from different parts of the country here. So we'll be seeing now um, how artists are bringing together both, um, I mean, the, the show is looking at the, an investigation into the landscape of Goa. So how do you take from the local folk and mythologies and culture from this this landscape and at the same time um, you know how, how how do you blossom it into reflecting what is going on around you in the contemporary situation and um, we'll, we'll be looking that. forward so that to is, that yeah. this is probably getting long so I'm gonna cut it but Leandra, <laughs> I I wouldn't speak Leandra de Souza no no you have so many wonderful things to say I think you're doing a fabulous job as a curator and and this place is blossoming under you so honestly a lot of congratulations to you, thank you. and thank you for sharing some time on evil O so now what we do is I say goodbye and first thing I say is remember please subscribe like and subscribe very important to subscribe to this channel to keep it going and then we both have to wave goodbye okay goodbye Hi. till next time from thanks, evil o thanks thanks evil bye. bye and that's it Thank mm -hmm. you.